The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. There really was a Grizzly Adam. He died in the year 1860 at the age of 53, but in his book about the Old West, Heroes Without Glory, the author Jack Schaefer wrote these words about Grizzly Adams and his last days. A minister called at his bedside, criticizing this old mountain man for his rough frontier ways. But Grizzly Adams replied, I have attended preaching every day, Sundays and all, for the last six years. Sometimes an old grizzly gave me the sermon. Sometimes it was a panther. Often it was the thunder and lightning, the tempest, or the hurricane on the peaks of the Sierra Nevada, or in the gorges of the Rocky Mountains. But whatever preached to me, it always taught me of the majesty of the Creator and revealed to me the undying and unchanging love of our kind Father in Heaven. Well, this minister retreated from the sick room, and only a few days later, Grizzly Adams died. But he died secure in the faith that God loved him. I, too, have heard many a sermon here in these same mountains, from the birds of the wild, lightning and thunder, the storms in the Sierras, and every one of them rang forth with the assurance of the power and the majesty and the living love of the Father in heaven. May you come to know these truths as well, to know that you are a son or daughter of God, that God created you not purposelessly, not to live your life in fear, dread, and anxiety, but to live in faith and confidence, knowing that in God you are secure. The great author Robert Louis Stevenson wrote the story of a ship out at sea in the time of storm. The passengers were in great distress, but after a while, one of them, against the orders of the first mate, went up onto the deck, and he made his way to the captain. The seaman was there at his post of duty at the wheel. But when he saw this passenger, was greatly frightened, he turned and gave him a reassuring smile. The passenger then went back down to the other passengers, and he said, I have seen the captain. And he smiled, and he said, All is well. Remember in your life always when your small boat is storm-tossed, when your heart is fearful, that you may walk through the storm to your captain who is at the wheel, and when you see his face, you can know that all is well. Said Jesus, fear not, be not anxious, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And have the faith that you have a great part in the mighty plan and purpose of God. You're not here as an accident. God has a use for your life. Sir Michael Costa, the celebrated British orchestra conductor, was holding a rehearsal. As the great chorus rang out, accompanied by hundreds of instrumental performers, the piccolo player momentarily ceased his playing, thinking perhaps that his contribution would not be missed amid so much music. Suddenly, the great conductor stopped the entire orchestra and cried out, Where is the piccolo? That sweet, shrill tone of the smallest of all instruments were missed by the keen ears of the master musician. And so it is that God takes note and recognition of even the smallest contributions of the seemingly least of his creation. God loves you. God knows who you are. God knows every hair on your head, said Jesus. He knows every time a sparrow falls or flutters to the ground, and God knows all about you. God loves you and cares for you, has compassion and concern for you, and a wonderful will for the living of your life. You lament that you have innumerable troubles in your life. So has every other man or woman who ever walked upon this planet Earth. The immortal poet Robert Frost began writing as a boy, but his abilities lay unrecognized. Year after year, he labored with his pen, submitting his poems to publishers again and again, but to no avail. How many people would have been able to keep it up against such consistent rejection? But Robert Frost persevered. Through lean and bitter years, he composed his poetry. Of his six children, two died in infancy, the third shortly after marriage, the fourth became mentally ill, and the fifth, a son, committed suicide. 
Not until he was past the age of 40 did Robert Frost begin to receive any recognition for his work. But as the author C.P. Snow put it, somewhere at the lowest stratum of the shifting quicksands of his nature, there was rock. Great men and women meet and master tragedy through sheer strength of spirit. Yet the message of the master is precisely this, that that strength of spirit is available to you as well this very moment if you will seek it and claim it in living faith. Faith, hope, and love, these are the great powers of the spiritual life. In his book, Man's Search for Meaning, the Viennese psychiatrist Viktor Frankl wrote of his life in a Nazi concentration camp, and I quote, as we stumbled on for miles, slipping on icy spots, supporting each other time and again, dragging one another up and onward, one thought transfixed me. For the first time in my life, he wrote, I saw the truth as it is set into song by so many poets, proclaimed as the final wisdom by so many thinkers, the truth that love is the ultimate and the highest goal to which man can aspire. And then it was that I grasped the meaning of the greatest secret that human poetry and human thought have ever had to impart, that the salvation of man is through love and in love. End of quote from Dr. Viktor Frankl. That is precisely why Jesus of Nazareth taught love. The two great commandments were and are and ever shall remain. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The love of God and others. And this love can have a new birth in your life this very moment. You can learn to know God and love this living God who loves you. Prayer can then transform seconds into service, minutes into miracles, obstacles into opportunities, adversities into adventures. Give your life to this living God who gave you your life, and all things will become as new for you. All things will become as new. On a plaque at Florida's famous singing bell tower, you can read these words. I come here to find myself. It is so easy to get lost in the world. Again and again, you come to the forks in life's road. You cannot perhaps decide which way to turn. There are decisions to be made. Often it's hard to decide. You need guidance. Yet confidently, the psalmist David in the 23rd Psalm declared, He leads me, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness or as it is also translated, in the right paths. And you read in the book of Proverbs, the wise man says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. God loves you and has a wonderful will for the living of your life. You may not know it or feel it or experience it in this moment, but it can begin as a grain of mustard seed. If you have faith, said Jesus, only as a tiny, tiny grain of mustard seed, Yet it shall grow and expand, and thus is the kingdom of God. When the astronauts of Apollo 13, which was a crippled space vehicle, were asked whether they felt any awareness of the infinite power watching over them or an awareness of God, John Swigert, one of the astronauts, replied, If you're asking whether I prayed, I most certainly did, and I have no doubt that my prayers and the prayers of the rest of the people on Earth did an awful lot for us getting back. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of, the poet Alfred Lord Tennyson declared emphatically. And when you pray, said Jesus, believe that you shall receive, and you shall receive. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find, he said. In this very moment, perhaps you've spent years of your life as a skeptic and agnostic, one who didn't know what to believe or didn't believe anything or weren't sure what to believe. In this very moment, if you can have a mustard seed-sized grain of the tiniest faith, it can be the beginning of the most satisfying, spiritually joyful, spiritual discoveries of your life, that you have a place in this universe. You belong here as certainly as the sun and the moon and the stars. God has a plan for your life, and for your life beyond this life, for eternal life. If you will but give your life to God in this moment, Turn it over to God, 
and say, it is my will that yours be done. Thy will be done. Ask God's guidance, power, wisdom, and God's comfort and strength for your life. And you will begin to discover these secret inner satisfactions. Henry Ward Beecher wrote, Dust by its own nature can rise only so far above the road, and birds which fly higher never have it upon their wings, and so the heart that knows how to fly high enough escapes many of those little cares and vexations which brood upon the earth but cannot rise above it into the purer air. Be not anxious. Let not your heart be troubled, said Jesus. Neither let it be afraid. Give your life to God. Trust God, for he careth for you. Dr. George Stewart wrote in his book, God and Pain. The true philosopher and the true believer sees his Lilliputian campaigns, defeats, and victories projected upon the cosmic struggle of the universe. In the spiritual sense, he is aligning himself with a struggling Christ who said, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work, becoming part of that laboring and pain-racked race which gropeth and travaileth for the perfect day. When one sees that one is a part of a titanic battlefront, that one is valuable in the mighty conflict, one will find joy enough and courage enough to carry one through the whirling flood of doubt and despair and to land him on the shore of faith. Our tiny efforts are but small replicas of the great universal battle, and our feeble human forms assume new dignity and new worth, and the tragedy and comedy of life are exalted into heroic proportions. When we become willing servants and co-workers with a God who himself struggles against sin and pain and loves even unto the death upon the bitter cross, Claim now that living love of God for your life and begin to live in this new spiritual heroism. As you begin to battle against the pain and prejudice and evils of human existence, as the son or daughter of God you really are, that you align yourself with God and know that whatever may transpire in your life, with God all things are possible. With God nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible. And you are a son or daughter of the living God. Claim that in living faith. And begin to live as you were born and created to live. Write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written pieces of literature on finding God, getting to know God, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. They're all in a booklet titled, Growing Spiritually. And it's yours without cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us. We also have one titled, Life After Death. What happens when you die and what happens afterward? Write for this. Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.